uh, a tragic and very rapidly evolving event or rapidly evolving event that took place uh, throughout numerous jurisdictions of our county uh, that involved numerous agencies uh, and unfortunately ended with the passing of life of two of our very own community members. Before I get started on the summary, I want to be very clear that our hearts ache today for the friends and family of those who passed away. No matter the circumstances, we at the Dane County Sheriff's Office take the loss of life very seriously. And we send our uh, deepest condolences and are empathetic to the loss of life that uh, occurred yesterday evening. The incident uh, included uh, multiple scenes, including a police pursuit in regards to uh, two individuals firing rounds uh, at our deputies and other responding agencies. It included a handgun, a rifle, uh, as well as an armed home invasion and armed standoff, and again leading to the decease of two of our very own community members. In summary, at approximately 5.30 p.m., the Dane County Sheriff's Office received a call of a check person incident uh, that took place in the town of Dunn. Deputies responded on scene and made contact with the family that advised that an individual and an, uh, two individuals came to the house and dropped off a young child. The uh, male and female left the scene uh, and the deputy aired out the vehicle to uh, complete the investigation in regards to the check person. As uh, uh, officers attempted to make contact with the vehicle, the vehicle failed to stop and a pursuit ensued. It went through numerous jurisdictions and both occupants of the vehicle fired their uh, weapons at deputies and responding agencies. The vehicle came to a stop in the town of Albion uh, after tire deflation devices were deployed. The female uh, fled the scene uh, and went into a wooded area. Through the use of technology and great police work, we were able to get in contact with the female, but she was found unresponsive. Deputies and responding agencies immediately started life-saving measures, but unfortunately, they were unsuccessful. The male half fled the scene as well, fired several rounds into a house on Ramsey Road in the town of Albion, entered the house, uh, and uh, barricaded himself in the basement of the resident. This male was later identified as Alexander C. Grunke. Inside of the house was a family. The Dane County Sheriff's Office deputies uh, courageously ran into the house, was able to secure the family and get them away from the house in a safe manner while an armed subject, Grunky, was in the basement of their home. The courageous acts of the deputies and the courage of the family is the reason why they were able to be uh, uh, removed from the house without further incident. As the individual was armed and barricaded in the basement of this residence, our Dane County Sheriff's Office used all of the tools in our tool, toolbox in order to ensure that we were able to get in contact with the individual by use of our hostage negotiations team, by use of our tactical response team, by use of crisis uh, negotiation, and other technology that has been provided to us at our Sheriff's Office. All of these attempts were unsuccessful, and deputies eventually made contact with the individual who was pronounced deceased in the basement of an apparent suicide. This is an ongoing and active investigation, but I would love to provide the community in regards to what specifically does that mean. Well, with an, uh, a situation like this, there are numerous uh, uh, crime scenes that have to be uh, held that have to be processed, that has to be measurements have to be taken, uh, pictures have to be taken, evidence has to be collected so that we ensure there is a full and thorough investigation into this incident. Uh, our CSI investigators are the ones that will be handling this and will continue to process these scenes as this investigation continues. That we are putting all our, our resources uh, in place right now to ensure that we uncover all of the facts of this incident, including our deputies, our crime scene investigators, our detectives, and any other resources that are needed. For additional information in regards to Grunke and the other individual involved in this incident that was deceased, please contact the Dane County Medical Examiner's Office for those details. So what do we need from the community right now? We need your trust and we need patience. We want to ensure that we have a safe, a full, completed, and thorough investigation 
and uncover all of the facts of this incident so that we can piece this together and understand exactly what took place. For more information, please follow the Dane County Sheriff's Office social media uh, accounts uh, for updates. This includes our Facebook page, our Dane County Sheriff's Office app, as well as you can go to our Dane County Sheriff's Office website and follow our press releases um, uh, that's on the website. I would like to thank all of the first responders that were involved in this case. This includes all of the law enforcement agencies that assisted. And this is state, local, uh, and possibly federal agencies that helped uh, with this incident. Would also like to thank uh, the courageous acts of our dispatchers, our fire, and our EMS, as we would not be able uh, to have come to this conclusion without their assistance and their partnership. I want to also thank our Dane County Sheriff's Office team for their work, their dedication, their experience, and their expertise, and their patience in using the technology and using their advanced training to ensure that we do what we do best, and that is uh, try to uh, have all incidents come to a peaceful resolution. I also want to give a big thanks to all of the Dane County Sheriff's Office deputies and professional staff that are covering the extra shifts, the picking up the overtime shifts, while our detectives, deputies, and investigators do their job and conduct this. Without them picking up that extra slack, we would not be able to do the great job that we do with our investigations. I want to also identify the fidelity, the bravery, and the integrity of our Dane County Sheriff's Office deputies and our partners. They represent us in one of the best ways possible, and that is through character, competence, compassion, courage, and communication. And it took all of that to make sure that we were able uh, to isolate this incident and make sure that uh, violence did not spread into other areas of our community. As we move forward, I want to continue to ask the community for our trust, and I want to continue to ask the community for patience as we work through this. We will provide updates as they become available to this incident. At this point, I will take uh, several questions before we move on and start uh, continuing the investigation that's taking place. Can you spell Russian? I can spell it for you. First name is Alexander, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R, middle initial C, and it's Grunky, G is in George, R-U-N-K-E. Can you let me know how old he is and where he's from? Uh, I believe he was born in 1985. 39. 39 years old. Um, Grumpy currently has a abduct, abduction case. Was that the infant that was dropped off involved in that case? I'm not sure about the specifics of that, but the uh, reason that we were able to come in contact with him because there was a small infant child that was indeed dropped off at a residence here in our jurisdiction, and that precipitated this incident. Were any deputies um, hit by Gumper? No, no deputies. Uh, at this point in the investigation, none of our deputies ex uh, expelled their firearms or discharged their firearms, nor were they struck in the gunfire throughout the pursuit. Any cars hit? Uh, not at this point. We're still investigating that and are going to continue to process those vehicles, and if that information becomes available, I will be sure to let you know. So Grunky was one community member who died. Who was the other? The other was another uh, female that was with him uh, that was in the vehicle. And she, where was she... From? I'm not sure exactly specifically where she's from. I believe the uh, Dane County Medical Examiner's Office will be able to provide more information in regards to her identification. Again, the Dane County Medical Examiner's Office will be able to provide her identification and all of that information that you're looking for, sir. And to clarify, is this connected to the death investigation in Iowa? Is Grunke considered the person of interest in that foul play of a woman that was found dead there? Yes. Uh, based off of our contact with the Dubuque County Sheriff's Office, uh, he is a person of interest in that homicide case. And um, the female involved, minor? Is she minor? Yes. Okay. Yes. Where was that baby dropped off? It was dropped off at a residence in the town of Dunn. I don't know specifically what that address was, but that's the general area where that took place. Is that a family member? Uh, at this point, we don't know the specific relationship between the two, but there was some sort of connection, and we will find that out as this investigation moves forward. Was it a boy or a girl? I'm unsure, sir. And do you know where the child is now? The child is in the custody of Dane County and is safe and unharmed. What was the connection between a 13-year-old and Grunky? Uh, I'm not sure the specifics of the connection. Uh, I believe they might have been related. 
Um, but we, we don't really know that at this time. It's still very early in the investigation, and we're trying to put together all of those pieces. I'm sorry, she was the other community member, though. Right? Yes. Okay. Is the female that passed away, <laughs> and then Grunky. Was she firing from the car as well? We believe so, yes. Was the 13-year-old believed to be self-inflicted, or...? At, at the time of the, the contact that we had, there was no obvious signs or wounds that were on the individual, and there were no weapons found at that time uh, when we made contact with the female in the woods. So there was no obvious signs of wounds when you found the female deceased? Nope, that is it. Well, thank you guys again for your time. I believe Elise Schaefer will be able to take any additional questions. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your uh, um, time this afternoon covering this very important subject and being the voice and the, uh, uh, the avenue to which we provide information to the community. Thank you again, and have a great day. Thank you. Elise. Yes, sorry. I just did want to talk during the live. A 13-year-old and a 5-month-old child. Who are their parents? Are their parents involved with this? Can you, can you go to the mic, please? So, like the sheriff said, thank you, Cynthia. Like the sheriff said, we're still piecing together the relationships here at this point. Information we have is that both children belong to um, the um, victim in Dubuque County. But not necessarily Grunky? Don't know the connection at this point. So, so is that 13-year-old that belongs to the victim in Dubuque, is that the same minor that was found dead in this Yes. yes. So there's a total of three dead. Yes. Were there any residents in the house at the time uh, that uh, that Grunky went in? Yes. A woman and her two children were inside. Our deputies were able to get them out safely. Was the five-month-old completely unharmed? As far as we know, um, no injuries, and um, he or she, I'm not even sure, is in the care of human services right now. And Grunky went, in, went into this house. He wasn't there to threaten the homeowners, but he's fleeing and trying to hide. That. We can't speculate on what, what he was trying to do at that point. Did he know them? Did he know them on purpose? Uh, no, not to our knowledge. He did not know them. He was just trying to escape. So. I can't remember if the sheriff said already, but did officers exchange gunfire with Grunky? We did not. We did not. Where was that 13 year old found? She was found in a wooded area off Washington Road in the town of Albion. Trying to see the connection between Iowa and Mid or Grunky's residency in Middleton. It, what's the connection there? Unclear at this point, yeah. And obviously, uh, Dubuque County Sheriff's Office is investigating their, their homicide. Um, we're taking this. We'll certainly be in contact with each other, but anything related to that should be directed to Dubuque county so my understanding is that they are also going to share more information later today was there any sort of amber alert issued with the two uh, i'm not i'm not sure yeah what came what might have come out of that county all right there was an right. alert that went out that was sheltering okay place. oh that? yes we did a reverse 911 okay. in, in the town of albion okay. to let people know um that there were you know armed people in the area and that we were searching for them so um, I know the sheriff commented on it, but you know we certainly understand that was a scary situation for the people in the town of Albion. Um, we certainly appreciate their cooperation last night and that that was a difficult spot to be in, but um, we're just glad that it ended without any anybody else being harmed. So. I know we spoke to a neighbor that said they didn't get that alert, but they were right on the, they were technically in Rock County. Do you guys okay. have any ability to send an alert in, like when you're right on the border there? to? Well, they, they usually map out a specific area that they feel is concern, and certainly, and that's you know, maybe, lines, yeah, so. maybe, you know, there's, it's kind of a fine line type deal, um, but we also tried to keep sharing as much as we could on social media, too, so that if people were monitoring the situation, they had some way of getting it, but certainly it's not always perfect, so. This may have been said, who had the rifle, who had the hand? I, I don't know specifically. All right, thank you guys. 
show you. Oh, at least, how much sleep have you gotten? <laughs> what was that? How much sleep have you gotten? Um, I don't know. Not enough. Uh. <laughs>